Hi everyone and welcome back. Now I've been off for a couple of weeks because I've actually been working on something. <laughs> um, <laughs> now um, I know I've been doing the STEM stories um, where I highlight underrepresented people in STEM but I kind of thought that it would be nice to feature present day real life relatable scientists and people in STEM for you to get to know and for them to kind of really show you who they are, show you what they do, show you their motivations and yeah I just thought that this would be the perfect time to kind of start that. So I like asking questions and I thought you know what why not just ask people questions and film their responses or get them to film their responses and then to basically show that to you and that's exactly what I've been doing. So I guess the premise of this, well another YouTube series on my channel is to um, pose a question or some questions to scientists and people in STEM in each episode and they will basically film their response to those questions and those questions can be about their research, it can be about their motivation to pursue the career path that they've chosen. It can just be something fun like their favourite bird, that's coming up soon. Um, and just, and just yeah, just different questions just for you to get to know them and find out more. Now the people that will be featured on this channel are um, people that I have connected with on Twitter. Now Twitter is a great place to be if you are in science because there's a huge and super supportive science community there. So um, if you don't have Twitter or if you don't um, follow people within sort of the science community then I definitely recommend that you do that. So with that being said I will put the Twitter handles of the people that I feature each week into um, the description box below. Um, please follow them on Twitter and just, you know, support them throughout their STEM journey. Um, and I'll also pop my Twitter handle below as well. And please feel free to also support me if you'd like by um, subscribing to this YouTube channel, um, liking any of the videos that you enjoy and also commenting as well. I'm really happy to engage with people on here. Um, if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. If you have any questions for the people that are featured on each episode, I'm sure they'll also be happy to answer those questions as well. Now, on to this first episode and the first question that I will be asking. I've decided that this first episode will focus on scientists who have an interest in space and the universe. And the question I've decided to ask is, what made you interested in space? I think, I think it's great that, you know, we try to find out, you know, what scientists do. But I think it's really important that we also find out why scientists do what they do, what motivates them, what interests them about their field. Now, the first person up answering this question is the wonderful, the brilliant, the amazing, Naya Butler Craig. Naya is an aerospace engineering PhD student at Georgia Tech and in terms of her expertise I'm gonna to have to read this because there's no way that I can memorize this awesomeness. Her area of expertise is in space electric propulsion where she studies electrostatic thrusters called Hall effects or ion thrusters and seeks to optimize them for deep space travel. First of all, wow, my mind is officially blown. <laughs> Second of all, let's find out what her motivations were. I knew space was something that I wanted to pursue when I took a class called Earth Space Science in the eighth grade. I'd already had inclinations towards science and engineering. Uh, quick story, when I was seven years old, I drew the entire underbody of a car I was sure could run on oxygen. When I took that class in the eighth grade is when an insatiable kind of curiosity kind of sprouted up in me. I was super infatuated with the enigma of space and how mysterious it was. And so um, it was from then on that I decided that I wanted a career in space science and engineering and that's how I am in aerospace engineering. But one of the best qualities of space and what I find most unique about it is its ability to unify people. 
Um, one of my favorite quotes is from Bill Johnson, who is a former astronaut, U.S. astronaut. And I'm paraphrasing him, but he said something along the lines of um, when he got to space and he looked back at Earth, he didn't see political boundaries, he didn't see religious boundaries, he didn't see social boundaries. He saw that we were all in this together. And if we could just remember that, we would get a lot more done. That is what I believe to be the spirit of space exploration. That is the future that I want for the world. Um, and that's for us to evolve as humanity. And I believe that through space, we can achieve that. Wow, what a brilliant response. Thank you, Naya. Um, I think what really stood out for me in her response was the fact that space has the ability to unify people. And I think that's really important um, for us as a society. Now, up next, answering this question is the wonderful Dr. Claudia Antolini, who is a science communicator and a public engagement professional. Okay, okay. And I want to point out that she's based in the UK, so she's representing for all of us. Okay. Now, I think it's really important to have science communicators featured here because communicating science is equally as important as doing the actual science. And in terms of, and this is exactly what Dr. Antonini does, um, which I'll be reading. So Dr. Antonini, she works to make science accessible, relevant and approachable to everyone, everyone. She has a PhD in astrophysics, during which she studied how gravitational lensing distorts the light from the early universe and what it tells us about dark energy and dark matter. Now let's see what Dr. Antolini has to say. Growing up, I was quite lonely. I didn't have great relationships with my peers and people my age. Uh, so I really yearned for a sense of belonging. I wanted to be part of something that was bigger than me. As I went on in studying science and mathematics, I figured out that maybe physics was the way for me to find the place I really belonged to and what could be bigger than space itself. So I went on in studying space science and astrophysics because I felt like that was my way of answering questions about myself through answering questions about the universe in itself. And as I went on and on, I realized I wanted to study cosmology, which is how the universe began and what happens at the really, really big scales. So looking for how it all came to be and how it all is now and how it could go on further along the line. Thank you very much, Dr. Antolini. I think her point about, you know, that sense of belonging that you get um, by pursuing a career in STEM, I think a lot of people, including myself, can definitely relate to that. Now we'll be moving on to the amazing astrochemist that is Ashley Walker. Now, Ashley undertook an undergrad chemistry degree, um, but now as an astrochemist, she studies the chemical compositions of icy bodies in our solar system. Let's see what she has to say. So growing up, I wanted my parents to buy me a star out of the sky and also a moon. And I thought it, was be, it would be cool to be a moon myself. And so while um, growing up, my uncle was like, well, I'll just buy her a telescope since, you know, that was his thing, too. He liked astronomy, too. So he was just like, I'll buy her a telescope. And I remember looking at the telescope at night and just being amazed and my cousins coming in like, oh, let us see it because I'm the youngest. So all my big cousins coming in like, oh, let us see it. Let us see it. You never buy us nothing, but you get everything. So it was really, really cool. Um, and then growing up, we all, my aunts will take us to Atler Planetarium. And at Atler Planetarium during that time, they had an exhibit. And in the exhibit, um, they had a scale and it was like a little cubicle and you would jump on the scale and, and they would have different scales, different exhibits of each planet, right? So each one will be a different planet and it will tell you how much you weighed on each planet. And I thought that was so amazing. And so that was one of the things that inspired me later on. It became my African ancestry. That really was the driving force of me going into astrochemistry. Thank you very much, Ashley. In a further chat with Ashley, she expanded on that last point um, by sharing that 
you know, by exploring who she was as a person, which meant exploring her African heritage, um, it definitely fueled her desire to do much more exploration and actually explore what was beyond our world. And in her case, this meant pursuing a career in astrochemistry. Next up is the powerhouse, that is Sarafina Nance. She is an astrophysics PhD student at UC Berkeley. And in terms of her research, it focuses on modeling supernova star astrophysics and using supernova to study the composition and fate of the universe. Like, why do I know so many amazing women in STEM? Like, I just, I don't, I don't get it. Like, ugh. these women are so inspiring. Like, they're badass. Like, I just, I don't get it. I, I can't, I can't. I'm just, like, my brain has been blown this whole episode. I've been interested in space since I was about four years old. Um, I used to listen to Stardate Radio on NPR with my parents almost every day, and I would sit outside with my dad um, a lot of nights with binoculars looking up at the constellations and learning about the stories behind them and thinking about how small we are. and. Um, sort of that perspective gave me a lot of peace and a lot of um, context for the day-to-day -day things that we struggle with on earth. And so being able to remind myself of that perspective has utterly changed my life. And I really fell in love with the idea that we are so small and um, there's so much to learn up there. Thank you so much, Sarafina, for a wonderful response. And can I just say, wow, like, you know, having an interest from the age of four, that's that's pretty amazing. And I think it's really important from that to basically make sure that we're encouraging interests in kids. If there is an interest there, it's never too early for them to start learning. Now, last, but definitely not the least in the slightest, is the wonderful, the absolutely supportive and amazing Sophia Gad Nazir. And she is a graduate cosmologist and her research focuses on figuring out the particle properties of dark matter. Now, while I've been asking scientists the question, what made you interested in space? Sophia is gonna answer a slightly different question, which is what makes you interested in space? Let's hear her response. What fascinates me most about the universe lies not in the stuff that we can see, which is beautiful, like stars, nebulae, galaxies, galaxy clusters are wonderful things to look at. But in fact, what fascinates me most is the stuff that we can't see, because the majority of the universe is actually made up of that, and we don't understand what it is yet. So the stuff that we can see, like myself, you, your dog, your cat, your hamster, laptop, the sun. These are things that interact with light and that's why we can see them. We call that normal matter. And that makes up a mere 5% of the universe's contents. The rest of the stuff, we don't understand. A whopping 70% of it is owed to this stuff called dark energy, which stretches the universe apart faster and faster with time, and we have no idea what it is yet. Then there's the remaining 25% which is owed to this stuff called dark matter, which is kind of like regular matter except it doesn't interact in the same way, and so we can't see it. There's so much more of it in the universe than regular matter, but we can't see it, but we know that it's there by its interactions with gravity, and what it does is right now it's holding galaxies together, holding them together from falling apart, and it also provided the seeds for the galaxies that we see today, and we still don't understand what it is yet. So my biggest fascination with the universe is the stuff that we don't yet understand. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Sophia. I think it was, I don't know about you, but for me, it was super enjoyable to just watch Sophia talk about dark matter and the things that we can't yet see or can't or don't yet understand um, because her passion for this just resonates. And I just think it's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Sophia. And this officially concludes the first episode. 
I really hope that you guys enjoyed these wonderful responses to the question what made or makes you interested in space and I just want to say thank you to the wonderful women in STEM who took time out of their days to film this response so thank you so much. Um, if you who are watching, um, if you study or work in a space related field, feel free in the comments to let us know what made or makes you interested in space. I for one would love to know 100%. Stay tuned for future episodes and in the meantime please like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel and please 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 follow these wonderful women in STEM on Twitter and support their journeys in STEM. Thank you so much and I will see you soon. Bye!